The stock market can definitely be a scary place, especially if you don't know what's going on, if you're new to investing, if you're new to trading, if you don't know what you're doing, essentially. And some of you may have been around for a while, but just haven't experienced any type of market pullback, market correction, market crash. The market's pretty much taking us on an emotional roller coaster right now. But it's definitely not the time for you to get emotional right now, because right now is the time that you should be planting seeds. So that's what we want to talk to you about today. Or you're not only going to lose money, you're going to lose potential profits that could have made a significant difference in your account. So in this video, myself and my guest Christopher Carter, yes, I brought him back again. We're going to be talking to you about what to expect in the market, what to expect in the coming up week with these inflation scares. We're going to talk about how that affects the stock market or the stock pricing. And we're going to talk about what you should be doing right now to prepare so that when the time does come, you are 110% ready. Stick around. You're not going to want to miss this. And we're going to be starting right now. Hey, what's going on? It's Pat from Top Ticker Trades. If you're new here and you want to learn how to use stocks and options to make your portfolio go parabolic, make sure you start now by subscribing and tapping that bell so you never miss an upload. What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to yet another video. We've got a very important topic to discuss today, so don't forget to smash that like button and that's all I'm going to say about that because without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. So, a lot of you probably clicked on this video because the thumbnail asks the question, is the market crash over? And as much as I would wish to say yes, it's over, go ahead and buy, I can't honestly tell you that because... It depends on what stocks you're holding, depending on what sectors they're in, will determine how safe those are for you to hold right now for the time being. What's been going on recently? Well, a lot of you may have thought that we've already experienced a market crash. Now, we certainly have experienced a correction in my opinion, but we've mainly been seeing that there's a rotation from one sector to the next. Now, Mainly, it's been the growth stocks, the penny stocks, anything speculative. I know all of our favorite SPACs, all of those have been hit extremely hard. And you've probably seen about a 40% loss or you're probably down 40% on paper if you've been holding those types of stocks. So what do we do moving forward? Should you keep adding to those positions? Should you go and buy stocks in other sectors that are doing well right now or expected to do well? The answer to that is kind of complicated, but it really ultimately depends on you. So let me tell you how that works. Now, if you're heavily leveraged, meaning if you're if you're using margin because your broker obviously will let you borrow uh, money to buy your stocks with, well, part of that, whether you're using margin and how much margin you're using, and also depending on your risk tolerance, that's all going to depend on how you're going to play this right here. So if you're heavily leveraged, then I would suggest, um, and I've got another video on this topic, so I'm not going to cover it very heavily here, but I would suggest maybe selling off some of your positions that you're down on. Now you're not going to be able to buy these back in shares if that's what you're doing, because you're going to want to take advantage of the tax credit that you'll get off of that. But essentially what you're going to want to do and you want to uh, make sure you watch that video because it explains in more detail. But what you're going to want to do there is put those into leaps. OK, so you're going to buy leaps for those same stocks if you really believe in that company and think that they're going to do well in the future. And essentially what a leap is, is a long term options play. So at least a year out to where you're kind of safe from any of the short term action or price action for whatever stock you're holding. And another reason for you to use these leaps as opposed to using shares of actual stock is because you're only gonna pay a fraction of the price that you would pay for the 100 shares of stocks. Now, for those of you not familiar with call options, each call option controls 100 shares of stock, which is why I was making a reference to 100 shares of stock or buying 100 shares of stock. So. In other words, you're going to be able to capitalize on any gains that you get from holding these leaps at a fraction of the price that it would cost you to own 100 shares of stock. Now, the reason that I'm suggesting this is because it'll allow you to get some of that margin 
off of your account. Okay, so you're not gonna be using as much margin. You're gonna be decreasing your margin but you're still gonna be able to control the same amount of shares of stock and make the same amount of profit, essentially, without having to be so heavily leveraged. So this is one major advantage to holding leaps over the actual shares of stock. Now, normally people are gonna tell you, well, not all people, but some people, and I usually preach this myself, is never sell while you're down. But when you're leveraged heavily, then that becomes a risk, especially when you're holding risky stocks. Now, some of these stocks may only be risky in this market environment right now. You know, a lot of good companies are pretty much on sale right now. And the only way that you're going to be able to take advantage of that and not become too over leveraged is by using leap options. And, you know, anytime you play with options, and I always preach this, if you're one of my subscribers, you already know, you're taking kind of a risk because you're paying a premium in order to buy that, uh, in, order, in order to be able to buy those hundred shares of stock that the contract allows you to be able to do later on down the road, which is exactly why you're buying a leap as opposed to some short-term option, which, which is going to lose value a lot more quickly than a long-term option. So very quickly, let me reiterate here. You're basically going to free up margin by selling off the shares of stock, shares of stock that you're down on, and you're going to, at the same time, buy a leap option on that stock. Now, another reason that you will want to do this is because you can pretty much get a tax credit for selling at a loss. Now, earlier I mentioned that you will not be able to buy back into these stocks, and you definitely don't want to do that. Uh, there's going to be a 90-day period where you cannot buy these stocks back, or it's considered a wash sale, and you will not be receiving any tax credit for doing so. But this is actually a method that, or a strategy that a lot of bigger players practice. It allows you to offset some of those gains, and at the same time, you're taking off margin or you're removing or reducing margin, which pretty much eliminates or reduces the risk of getting a margin call, which is something that if you haven't experienced yet, you definitely don't want to experience that because that's an area where you're going to get to losing a lot of money very quickly. So that's one strategy that you can use, another strategy that you can use in this type of market environment is simply to sell puts. Now, I've been talking about options. I'm not going to say a lot lately, but I've been talking about them in the last couple of videos, and there's a reason for that. And that's because options serve a purpose here. They pretty much allow you to not only protect yourself, but also to reduce risk and make money at the same time. So why would you want to sell puts? Why wouldn't you want to buy puts in this type of market environment where you're anticipating that things might go down? Well, very simple. Number one, you know, when you're buying calls while the market is going up or a stock is going up, what's the risk there? Well, you're paying a hefty premium, especially when the stock is going in the direction of the option that you're buying. So if you're buying a call option on a stock that's going up, you're paying a heavier premium than you should be paying. That's why you want to wait till the market is down before you buy calls. And kind of in the same, uh, the same reason that you want to be selling call, or I'm sorry, selling puts when the market is down. Because if you're buying puts while the market is down, you're going to be paying a hefty premium because the expectations that the market maker has. The expectation is that the market will keep going lower or that that stock's going to keep going lower or at the very least that stock is down right now. So the market maker is going to tax you if you're a buyer of options, of puts in this example. So you want to be the seller and statistically speaking, 90% of the time, probably even higher than that. If you're an options seller, whether that be calls or puts, you're the one that's winning. You're the one that's making money because of those hefty premiums, but you don't want to just sell options at any strike price. It has to be done strategically. So you do kind of want to pay attention to charts or at the very least, you know, pay attention to what's going on both in the market and what's going on with that company, the company of 
uh, for which the stock you're selling options on. Now, <clears throat> here's another bit of advice for those of you that aren't very familiar with options, don't use them very frequently. Uh, one tool that you can use, and this can be found pretty much uh, nearly at any brokerage, you can even find this at Robinhood. There's something that's called the anticipated move, and that's how the value of options is calculated based on where the market maker thinks that the stock will go and based on where the market maker thinks that the stock will not go. And of course, in saying this, I am referring to the share price of the stock. So here's uh, what you need to be paying attention to. You wanna be paying attention to the probability of success for that specific option that you're either buying or selling. And any brokerage, uh, even Robinhood, like I said, will show you your probability of being profitable so your probability of being successful in that trade so before you actually press that buy button make sure that you're looking at those percentages shoot for anything that's got a 70 percent probability that your options trade is going to be successful now one last bit of advice here make sure you keep a little bit of money on the side so Whenever you sell your option, make sure you don't just grab that money and throw it into something else. Keep a little bit of that money on the side because what will happen is the option after you sell it will start losing value for the buyer, which means that you're actually profiting at that point. Now, if you wait until the actual expiration date of that option, you know, the longer you wait, yes, it is true that these options are, are losing extrinsic value, which is always a good thing if the option is way out of the money. But at the same time, the longer you wait, the more of a risk you run that the trade will go against you. So what you want to do is give yourself a higher probability of success. And the way you're going to do that is by buying it back or closing it, buying it to close a little early. OK, before the option actually expires, if it's going your way and you should have rules about this up front before you even sell that if if you've gained a certain percent of profit on that option, go ahead and take the money off the table by buying it back to close it. Now, you can always sell back another put uh, either on the same stock or a different stock. You know, you're always going to find opportunities in the stock market. And that's one great thing about stocks and selling options but your responsibility ultimately is to look for setups that are giving you the highest probability of success and that's how you survive in pretty much any market environment and live on to trade another day and ultimately that's how you're going to be able to make money on a consistent basis but anyhow that's enough from me let's uh, go ahead and give the mic up to chris we accumulate stocks we are in the market to accumulate stocks and I think 99% of us want to make money. How do you do that? You accumulate stocks to sell them back. So the cheaper you can buy the stock at and the more you can sell it for at the end is going to be your gain. So when they go on sale, you have to get some cheap ones in with some of the regular price ones. So when they go on sale, it does not happen all the time. It's very rare. You just can't miss an opportunity. You got to get in there. You got to capitalize on it. I won't tell you what to do or which stock to invest in per se. But if you love a company and you feel like they're going to go, you know, be a going concern, they're not going to go bankrupt. And you learn that through financial analysis. But if you love them when they were high, you got to double love them when they're low. Everything in life that goes on sale, people take advantage of except stocks. You have people who love uh, clothing, uh, Louis Vuitton, and uh, Louis Vuitton leather jacket can go on sale tonight. I guarantee you they will sell out. But your favorite company will go on sale. Not only do they not sell out, people give all their stocks back. And it's just the craziest misconception known to the stock market, Pat. I guess it's just fear. I don't know how else to describe it, but people get scared and they dump rather than accumulate when the time is right but one other thing before i forget that i did want to uh, or that i wanted to have you talk to my subscribers about is inflation so we know that this stock market crash or correction was caused by inflation concerns so how does inflation for and this is for those of you that are holding growth stocks, penny stocks. I know that, that those of you that were holding those are affected the most. Some of you may not have felt the pain. It just depends on what you're holding. But I think Chris can 
pretty much touch up on how this, how these uh, high levels of inflation or higher levels of inflation will affect growth stocks. So Chris, can you tell them a little bit about that? Uh, growth stocks by nature uh, sell at a premium. What is the premium? The premium is the growth that you're going to buy today to cash in on in the future. And we're talking five, six, seven years out. Well, it, when you project cash flows out five, six, seven years, you have to use a discount rate. And the smaller that discount rate, the more money you're going to get back, the higher the valuation. It's kind of like a, a credit card. You got one at 20% interest. You got one at 0% interest or two. You're going to use the one at 2%. You're not the one at 20 at 20%. You may not even want the credit card anymore, but they are real sensitive to those inflation rates because it's going to increase how much capital it's going to cost to invest in that company. So when you discount those cash flows back, you're going to get less money, less of a valuation. And, and we see this happening with Neo in particular is that since the growth stock growth part of it is so far out in the future. And when you discount it back, you're going to get a smaller valuation and a smaller stock price. So that is how sensitive these guys are to changes in the interest rate. Those of us who are familiar and, you know, familiar with how this goes, don't get too excited because we know interest rates go up, they go down. Uh, they can come in and say, and these are not interest rate. These are inflationary fears. There is no inflation per se that's been proven. These are just fears that are rocking the market. So when it becomes real life, maybe we can do some adjustments right now. These are just fears that may not materialize. And one other thing, what I like to look at when dealing with NEO is how safe and secure do the institutional investors feel the mutual funds the vanguard funds how have they left no they're growing their position so i feel real good about them i feel like interest rates are going to be a part of life they always have they always will be and it's just something we got to live with so when you have people out there and they're throwing fears around i just kind of you know say hey thanks i'll hammer this stock and move on so actually what you're saying is rather than running and being scared every time a stock falls or every, anytime we see any YouTubers dropping videos about this new market crash and, you know, this stock is going to tank, you're saying we should accept this with open arms and be kind of uh, happy that it's going on. I mean, you didn't use those words, but is that kind of what you meant? You know, any anybody who's done this for any length of time or studied U.S. economics know uh, the only constant is change. So we all know interest rates go up, they come down, and they change throughout time. Everyone agrees on that. That is a fact. We know this is what's bothering the NEO stock right now is the uh, inflationary fears. So this is not the first time we've been scared by inflation. It won't be the last. So not only I say, you know, don't be afraid of it. You need to become comfortable with it. This is going to be a part of life going forward. You know, it, it's no way around it. We have to have inflation and uh, full unemployment. They're still trying to get there. We have monetary and fiscal policies that play a part. But if you're going to run and hide every time somebody says something about inflation, uh, then maybe you uh, need to get out of the game now and sell your position. Because if you can't stomach this, these are just fears. What are you going to do when the real inflation hits? Well, maybe they can do something like play Monopoly or Connect Four. I don't know, but uh, this isn't for them if that's the way they feel. Anyhow, Chris gave us some very good points, and he gave some very good advice. Now, I would say that he's saying that we need to average down anytime we get an opportunity. Does that sound right? That's exactly right. Um, get in there, and if, if you don't like them, if you like them at 60... Why don't you like them at 30? <laughs> you should love them at 30 if you like them at 60. Otherwise, you're not making any sense. Anyhow, guys, hey, listen. Chris has to get out of here. I've got to go to bed. It's late. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the content. Make sure you hit up that description. And go ahead and join Chris's channel. Go ahead and sub. He's got valuable content, especially 
if you like Neo and if you're holding Neo. But also, make sure you sub here and join my family if you're not part of it already because I want you to join my family. I want to help you make money. Before you close it out, I just want to leave you guys with one quote uh, from one of my favorite guys, Benjamin Graham. A lot of you know he's the one that uh, mentored Warren Buffett. And he always reminded us at the end of the day, the volatility is not so much in our portfolios as it is in our hearts. So you need to, you know, sit down and look in the mirror, whatever you're looking at, whatever your position is, and just take a long, hard look at what you have, what you expect it to do, and learn to live with those decisions because the start market is going to do what the start market does. It is us that really need to check our volatility at the door. You know what? That actually makes a lot of sense. Check your volatility at the door because if you can't do that, well, maybe you don't belong investing in the stock market. Maybe you're just gambling. Are you playing with stocks that are volatile, too volatile for your taste? While I have you here, I wanted to quickly tell you about the brand new First Trade app, available for mobile or PC. The platform will give you access to powerful and easy to use tools and allows you to trade with less restrictions, zero commissions, zero fees, and you can use the first link in the description below to download a free stock today without having to deposit any money. This will greatly help out the channel and is always appreciated. And now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Congrats, ladies and gentlemen, you've made it to the end of the video. If you like what you watch, make sure you subscribe because I put out videos just like this one every single day. And please do me a favor and smash that like button if I helped you in any way because it really goes a long way in helping the channel out and keeps me motivated to make videos every single day. Now there's a lot of work involved, a lot of research, and a lot of time and effort into editing and putting these out daily for you guys. You can subscribe from your screen right now or if you want to watch one of my other videos, I'm sure YouTube has some good content picked out for you on the left-hand side of your screen now. Thanks for sticking it out with me till the end, and I will see you guys in the next video.